have been thinking about this for a long time, challenging myself to just turn the camera on and record something once a week, uh, just as a sort of way to get my thoughts out there. Um, uh, because anyone who knows me knows that I think a lot and, uh, probably you know, more than twice the amount that I speak. And, uh, I've definitely been thinking a lot lately, probably to, uh, a fault. And I really want to, uh, I really want to create content, um, you know, obviously for, for the, for the brand, uh, for the pedals, but it's something I had wanted to do even before I got started making pedals. Um, but for various reasons, which I'll get into, I've been holding myself back and, uh, really questioning my relationship with social media lately, uh, as I'm sure a lot of people are on a daily basis. So I had started a podcast last year. I think maybe I've only uploaded six uh, episodes and I haven't really been keeping up with that or thinking about other people I could talk to, but the idea of creating some sort of long form content, um, I thought would be good that, you know, there have at least been several hundred people that have watched the podcast episodes and I think maybe I should focus on creating content for that small group of individuals as opposed to, uh, you know, trying to make the most optimized content to get, you know, tens of thousands of views, whatever it is. Uh, certainly the landscape has changed with TikTok and reels, shorts, whatever you want to call it, short form video. Um, and I just really haven't known how I should, you know, put my stuff out there. Um, and the amount that I've thought about it uh, and not done anything about it is really So it's been uh, about five months since I made a YouTube video and uh, I'm not feeling great about that. I think it's also been about two months since I posted something on Instagram. And uh, well, I've been dwelling a lot on this kind of stuff lately, maybe lately more so than ever. It's always been uh, a bit of an issue for me, but I just thought and I've been thinking about this too for a while that um, I'm just going to turn the camera on and speak. Maybe I should try and do this once a week. Uh, so this is the first one. I can call this a podcast. Uh, mostly that's been conversations, but I figured maybe some people are interested in hearing what I have to say. Uh, maybe not. That's okay, but... If you are watching this and you want to continue, this is going to be uh, maybe a place for me to share my thoughts on a regular basis and, uh, you know, kind of provide the most information about what I'm doing uh, week to week because I've, you know, been relatively quiet about it um, and kept to myself. So... I don't even know really where to start with this. I have like so much stuff that I would like to say. Um, there's so many, you know, videos I've thought about making and I just haven't. And I've tried to stay busy. Uh, and I think for the most part I have, um, I've, I've kept going, you know, I set some goals for myself at the start of the year and they were mostly about, uh, product releases. I wanted to release something new every quarter 
And that's sort of been like the overarching goal that's kept me on track. Um, but since I, you know, coordinated a lot of stuff around the release of the 12 stage phaser, uh, in April, uh, things have really sort of, you know, slid in terms of my, uh, content creation. And even up to that point, like I wasn't doing super great. And this is something I've been sort of beating myself up about, uh, for a long time. And there's several reasons why I'm holding myself back. Uh, I'm a perfectionist. Uh, I procrastinate. I just, I don't know. I feel like I have unrealistic expectations about, you know, what I want to produce and, uh, you know, rather than just making a bunch of shitty videos that nobody watches, I've just sort of not made anything. Um, and the things that I have made, you know, I put way too much time into it and that's sort of why I just want to make videos for the sake of making videos, try and get more comfortable, um, speaking on the camera doing things unscripted, doing things in a way that, uh, is a little more sustainable for me, I guess. And, uh, that was part of the reason I started the podcast in the first place, you know, just let the cameras roll, talk to somebody and, uh, you know, that would be it. It's a little different doing it one-on-one -on -one, speaking to the camera. It's hard to imagine someone on the other side of it. Um, but I figured it's a good exercise and I would like to at least in some way document what I've been doing week to week, because I feel like, especially lately, it's sort of been a mystery. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not that active in people's minds. That's probably the case. And maybe you don't realize like I haven't been posting, but to me, it seems like, uh, you know, it's kind of at the forefront of my mind all the time. And, uh, I realize, you know, what I've chosen to do, uh, start this pedal company and take it full time, which I've been doing for I think almost close to two years now. Um, I'm sort of counting like full year last year, but I did start a few months before the end of last year. Um, and now we're already into August and I think the reason I'm feeling so, I don't know, concerned about my ability to produce content is that I'm sort of feeling like I'm at the limit of like my sustainability. If I continue to do nothing in that regards, like obviously I need to continue to build, uh, an audience though. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful for the people who have supported me and, uh, you know, continue to buy my products. Um, it's, it's honestly more than I could ever have expected. And it continues, uh, it continues to be Yeah, uh, this is, <laughs> this is hard. I tried to make some notes about what I wanted to say. Um, the second line says I'm struggling. So definitely I've had some, uh, some sort of mental health, uh, struggles, I suppose. And it's so, sort of regarded sort of related to me overthinking, uh, a lot, pretty much everything that I'm doing. It definitely, it's like, uh, a <laughs> concoction of procrastination, imposter syndrome, uh, self-consciousness when it comes to my guitar playing and, you know, speaking in front of a camera. And 
just my lack of time management skills. Um, it's, it's been challenging to do this, uh, alone. Like I'm spent, like it takes a lot. Pretty much everything takes more time than I anticipate making the pedals, spending time, you know, making design changes with, with PCBs, figuring out, uh, how much of each part I need to order. Like there's definitely lots of busy work that can eat up a large chunk of my time. And I've sort of been diving into that, uh, because I'm not feeling like creating content and the reason. So starting today, let's say every Friday, I'm going to, turn the camera on and I'm just going to talk. Uh, I have sort of an idea what I'm going to talk about today. Maybe it'll be different next week, but I've really been struggling to put out any sort of content and I want to communicate what I'm thinking about, what I'm doing. There's lots of stuff that I want to share and, uh, for various reasons, which I'll touch on a little bit. I just haven't been able to do it. It's actually the third time, uh, of me hitting record on the camera and I'm just going to keep going. So if you're interested in, you know, what I've been doing over the last few years, this is going to be the place to sort of hear about it straight from me, uh, I'm hoping that at least if I do this, I'll have some sort of consistency, uh, in terms of, you know, how I'm communicating with you, whatever, uh, I should call you, my audience, my followers, uh, you know, that seems kind of silly, but the people who are interested in what I'm doing, the people who have supported me, the people who make this possible because I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And I'm incredibly grateful that I've in the position that I've been able to do this, uh, create pedals for a living for getting close to two years now. I just really feel like if I can't figure out this sort of, uh, you know, content creation marketing thing that, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna continue. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a lot of this stuff that I'm sort of referring to right now is my own overthinking. Um, but I've definitely been struggling and, uh, you know, one of the reasons is I've, I'm really sort of, uh, not sure how I even feel about social media. Like I, I shouldn't say that. Like, I don't, I don't feel great about it. I don't like how much time I personally spend uh, you know, scrolling through my phone, looking at stuff that, you know, I'm not even really that interested in. It's a, it's an addiction like anything else. Um, and part of me feels guilty to try and create something that's going to just be contributing to this, uh, you know, dopamine addiction, uh, trying to you know, make the most optimized video to get the most views. It's a, it's a stupid thing, I guess, to think about, um, given what I've chosen to do, but I'm just being, uh, honest about it. And I figure, you know, at least if I just come here and talk, uh, you know, maybe I can find a way to focus my creativity, uh, whatever this is into that sort of core group of people that are really interested in what I have to say and what I have to share. And, you know, it doesn't matter to them whether or not, you know, the hook of my video is interesting. Uh, I know several hundred people have watched the podcast episodes that I've recorded so far. 
So if you've enjoyed that and you like hearing what I have to say, maybe this is something you can come back to and listen each week. Uh, you know, and at least I'll feel like I'm putting out some sort of regular form of content and communication about what I'm doing, because honestly, I spend so much time thinking about what I would like to say to you guys. And I'm just holding myself back, um, for various reasons, me being a perfectionist, me being a procrastinator. Uh, you know, I've just got a whole bunch of blocks when it comes to making videos, uh, or, how I should portray myself on social media. And uh, unfortunately, I've just chosen for the most part not to post anything or to be like hypercritical about things that I do post, um, you know, to the point where it's like a detriment. I'm not posting anything. And, uh, you know, I, I know that that's probably not going to be sustainable chosen what I've, uh, you know, given what I've chosen to do. So, um, the main thing that I wanted to talk about this week was to show off my, uh, pedal board, my latest iteration of it anyways, which is this, um, because I want to make a new one and I just figured it would be cool to document um, this version of it because it's sort of like a precursor to the new one that I want to build and uh, I don't think a lot of people are taking the approach that I am of using a MIDI controller and an Axe FX, um, at least in terms of the people who are trying to recreate John's um, signal chain and tone. And for me, being a person who doesn't like to tap dance, uh, I really like the control that you have with a MIDI controller slash loop switcher um, to change multiple effects at one time and really, you know, set up parts of songs. Um, so I am going to walk through that, uh, shortly. Um, I just want to see if there's anything else that I wanted to touch on. Um, I think that's, pretty much it, at least for this little intro. Um, if so if you're still watching, uh, thank you. Um, Had to have a little pause there. It's a. Uh, it's really hard to. There's so much. There's so much stuff in my head that I don't know how to get it out. Like I just turned on the camera and started talking to it. I I tried to plan a little bit about what I wanted to say. Um, I feel like it didn't come out quite right. But if I keep doing this, I'm sure it'll get a little better, a little easier. Um, yeah, I did, I did want to give, for now, I want to get a little bit, uh, a stuff, a little bit more stuff off my chest anyways, because I have been thinking about, uh, you know, the types of content, the types of videos I wanted to create for a long time. I have lots of ideas. Uh, I'm just not executing them. So I'm hoping that, you know, at least 
<laughs> at least maybe I can get some of these ideas out. Uh, I can do this consistently once a week, you know, just sort of talk about what I've been doing. And, uh, you know, maybe simultaneously I can, you know, put out some more uh, sort of thought out videos or shorts. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what the schedule is going to be like on that. But, you know, at least if I'm doing this once a week, it's something. Uh, so I want to just go back and talk about uh, sort of what my plans for the year have been because even though uh, everything I'm saying right now sounds kind of negative, uh, I, I, uh, things have been going well, relatively. Um, as of the beginning of August, I had already sold more pedals than I did all of last year. So I'm, I'm really grateful that I've been able to continue to grow uh, what I've been doing, like what I've been doing year over year. Like every year it's gotten a little bit bigger and while I still feel like, uh, you know, I'm not where I need to be or where I want to be in terms of being like more comfortable, um, making a living. I'm, I think I'm doing okay. Uh, but you know, I tend to be a little bit more on the critical side than the optimistic side. So, um, my goals for the year were a little bit broad. Uh, I, I tried to plan the year in advance, but not on like a very fine detailed scale, uh, I guess. My main goal was just to put out something new every quarter. And the thing that I was working on at the end of last year was the 12 stage phaser, the Mogerfoger one that I put out in April. And I probably could have done that in the first quarter, but uh, there was a couple things I wasn't sure about. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to put that out quarter two. Quarter one was just something simple. I was like, my friend wanted a clone, so I made a clone. And, uh, you know, I sort of redesigned a smaller uh, Big Muff and Fuzz Right just to go on its own. And I, I've done that a few times to make like individual pedals of the stuff that's in the Empyrean. And that's, uh, you know, never really taken off for whatever reason. But... I did those things because I I know that the pedals that I make are expensive and I just wanted to have something at a different price point um, so that, you know, if there's somebody out there who wants to support me but they can't afford the Empyrean the Deluxe Modulation Ensemble, like I understand, I wanted to have those circuits available individually as well. Like, it, it seems like it makes sense, but, you know, again, for whatever reason, people don't seem to be that interested in buying them, which is fine. Um, but you know, put out the clone, you know, I sold a handful of those already, uh, you know, with little promotion, I didn't even do a demo video or anything. Um, so that's really cool that people will just buy the pedal for me. So that was quarter one, quarter two was the phaser and that was my most successful release. And, you know, I had a pretty coordinated marketing effort, like a couple press releases. It was, uh, you know, on premier guitar website, another gear website, I think gear, gearnews.com um i commissioned several demo videos for that made a couple of my own just i guess reels um but not a full demo which i would like to do and then um you know some emails i've i've, I've been trying to focus on my growing my mailing list because i you know that's something i control as opposed to social media um yeah that that's going off on a tangent but Another reason I'm a little bit concerned about social media and uh, like frustrated, I guess, with it is that I feel like I have to make, I have to make something that's like, you know, attention grabbing enough for people to see it because I could post something and, you know, it only reaches a small percentage of my audience. Like, you know, I think I have a, a little over 4,000 followers now, but if I post a story, like, you know, at the most, I think I've ever seen it, like 1200 people have seen it. So obviously like there's some sort of, uh, you know, the algorithm stuff going on there. Uh, same with, you know, any other posts, like, 
you can look at the insights and you can see like, oh, like this percentage of your audience, this percentage is not your audience. And it's like, it doesn't even reach people inside your audience unless it's, I don't know. I, I don't really care to get into that kind of stuff, but at least with, uh, you know, the email, I know it's going like directly to the people. And if they're looking in their inbox, like they, they might not open it, but uh, like a larger percentage of the people, I feel like actually see it. And, uh, I, I don't know. I kind of miss the days of, I don't know. I don't really miss it, but you know, when you went on Facebook before, like there was a timeline, it wasn't like an algorithmic feed. It was like every one you're friends with or whatever you followed, you saw this stuff in chronological order. And, uh, I just feel like I have less control, uh, over who's actually going to see the stuff that I put out when I put it on Instagram or whatever. But like at the end of the day, the ball is in my court to make something that's interesting. So it's fine. I, I can live with it, but, um, I don't want to spend all my time thinking about, you know, what it is to make the perfect video, uh, or, you know, to have the most like <laughs> aesthetically pleasing Instagram feed. Although these are the types of things that have been really holding me back from putting out anything, uh, on this platform. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's my little tangent quarter three, uh, which is what we're here now is, uh, is going to be the low pass filter. Um, so the second Moog pedal, um, and I've actually opened up the pre-order for this already. If you're on my mailing list, you would have seen that, or maybe you visited the website. I have pre-sold, uh, a good number of those. And that, that was just sort of like a soft release. I'm still planning on, you know, doing some marketing uh, and, you know, having it officially launch, I guess, next month. But, uh, you know, that's going <laughs> to require me to get out of this uh, little rut that I'm in. But that's always been the plan for quarter three. I have another plan, uh, sorry, another pedal plan for quarter four which is going to be the first like sort of non frusciante pedal that I've created. And if you may have seen it on my story, um, but that's going to be a pedal based on the Schumann PLL. Um, and it's inspired by, uh, at least for me, the use of that pedal in the Boyd song curious. Um, so, I've sort of kept up with that. Uh, you know, like I said, the plan was to release one pedal each quarter. Um, and then also sort of to make a batch of the existing pedals. So, you know, I sold 20 Imperia in the first quarter, uh, put out 20 deluxe modulation, sorry, 20, I guess, Imperia in each quarter, 20 deluxe modulation ensemble. That was sort of the plan. Um, but the last batch of the Empyrean and the DME, I still have a few left over. So it's like, this is sort of where the, the, the struggle in my head is coming from like, okay, maybe I've sort of reached the end of, uh, you know, interest without continuing to promote these products, um, and, you know, create content, reach a wider audience. But the thing that I found difficult to do with that is I, it seems silly, but I, I don't really like to repeat myself. And, uh, that I know that was something I really struggled with at the beginning. I just assumed like, Oh, everybody is like hanging on to my every word. Uh, you know, everybody sees everything that I post on social media, which like I just talked about is obviously not true, but, uh, I'm always sort of like excited about the next thing. So it's been hard for me to be like, by the Empyrean, by the, the DME, whatever, you know, like, uh, I make the video, I made the kind of first videos about them and I, I've been meaning to make a, you know, a revised one about the Empyrean cause I made some changes after about the first 50 and I think it looks a lot better now. Um, but I, I have, I have found that hard, um, just cause I'm always sort of thinking about what I want to do next. And, um, uh, 
I need I need to figure out some way to balance, uh, you know, sort of keeping uh, some interest uh, and, you know, maybe some sort of promotion um, on the pedals that exist already. Um, anyways, that being said, like I'm still, <laughs> I'm already thinking about like what I want to do next after, uh, you know, these pedals and, uh, I like that. And m maybe if I continue to make this type of video, I can, uh, I can keep going with, you know, it, it, at least communicating what I'm, you know, currently interested in, um, and you guys can leave me some feedback in the comments, then, you know, that's also going to be helpful. Uh, you know, it can sort of dictate what I talk about in these types of videos. And, uh, you know, maybe if there's questions about things that I say, you know, we can identify things that I can make more in depth, like actual, like scripted or, you know, detailed videos about, uh, as opposed to just, you know, me vlogging or doing a podcast like this. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, that's good for at least that part about it. So like, let's get to, you know, what, uh, I wanted to talk about today, which is this pedal board. So here it is. This is the one that I've been using for the last, I don't know, year or so. Let me try and get that in the frame. And uh, the only difference uh, is I recently added the phaser. I had the phase 90 on there for a while. But I wanted to talk about this because I am actually in the process of making a new pedal board. But before I ripped this one apart, I thought it would be good to document it. Um, and sort of explain the thought process and the signal chain because it's sort of a precursor to what my new board is going to look like. And I don't think a lot of people are, at least I don't see it very often, um, using an, like a MIDI controller uh, and an Axe FX or some sort of modeling stuff to do the, do the Frusciante thing like a lot of people are using, uh, you know, Marshall amps, whether they're like, you know, small heads or whatever, like, um, but I feel like, the, you know, there's a lot of, at least for me, I really prefer what, what I'm able to do with the MIDI controller in terms of, you know, just having lots of versatility, lots of effects, uh, and being able to switch off multiple things, uh, at once. So. I feel like I've talked enough, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw the board up on the desk here and we'll, we'll talk about the signal chain and then I'll, I'll do some demonstration. So let's check it out. <laughs> I couldn't get the whole board to fit on here. So I'll just have to start to tilt it so you can see the beginning. Uh, first thing I'll walk through is the signal chain. So I like to keep my clean tone as simple as possible. Um, I'm going through the tuner, which is true bypass into the microamp and then the fuzz factory, um, into this loop switcher, which is a true bypass loop switcher and a MIDI controller. And from there it's going out to the chorus pedal at the end, uh, just the chorus section of my deluxe modulation ensemble. And then it's going stereo out. So, because those first three pedals are true bypass, basically, you know, if I want a clean tone, it's just straight into the CE1 and out. And I have it set. So there's reverb on one side, um, which is the silver Jubilee side. And then on the other side, which is the plexi side. And then so in stereo, you get some two together, but that's what it sounds like uh, without the buffer. If I engage the buffer, get the high end, you get the full signal back. Um, so, you know, my clean tone is very much just buffer CE1. That's it. Um, and then anytime, anytime I want, I can engage the chorus or the vibrato. All 
All right, so that's that's simple. That's a clean tone. And then obviously, you know, if I want to engage the microamp or the fuzz factory, uh, I can. The tuner will mute. Then from there, we have uh, four loops in the loop switcher. So the first one is for my distortion. So right now I just have this in loop mode. So if I want to use distortion, I can engage the first loop. And uh, basically it's going to the noise suppressor. And then within the noise suppressor, all the distortion over here is in a loop. Uh, so first I have the DS2. Then the fuzz right. Big model. The microamp on the Imperian. And the uh, super badass. And again, these are all in the noise suppressor loop. So, you know, uh, maybe with those. You can set it so, you know, you don't hear anything. Um, not using the CE1 preamp out of this, I'm just coming out of the second uh, effects send, so I'm basically just uh, bypassing that completely because I'm getting the preamp out of the CE1. So first loop is distortion, second loop is where my wah pedal is, and I have an additional uh, micro amp. And uh, the wah. Obviously, I can't really demonstrate that without, uh, you know, my feet very well. It's hard to kick on. Um, but the reason that I have the second microamp is just for like certain instances where I want to have. Um, I want to have the microamp for my clean tone, like when I'm playing Can't Stop, I usually have the microamp on the whole time. But then I want to be able to, with the loop controller, engage the big muff later on. Um, and usually I'm engaging multiple distortion pedals at one time, but, uh, this allows me to, you know, uh, ha have my sort of clean tone for the song, have a microamp engaged, and then also add a big muff or some distortion later. In the third loop, we have all the, uh, modulation effects. So I think in order we have the 12 stage phaser. Typically, I just have, uh, it looks like my settings got shifted. Typically, I have set to just like a slow phase. Then, uh, oh, this got tilted as well. Uh, the C2W. I think Josh used the C2, so I'm using this on... Uh, when I play Dark Necessities, and maybe for part of Goodbye Angels too. So I'm using that uh, on just like the CE2 mode. And I have a tremolo, which uh, I like to use just to add a little bit of movement on California Cajun. And then the uh, mistress. And I have that set to kind of like a fast rate. Um, using that for like the can't stop part or uh, kind of to emulate a rotary speaker in what's in. So that's it for the modulation loop. And then in this last one, I have a delay. Um, so I think I have a couple like kind of slapback presets on here. So like, 
is using this for this in combination with the DD6. Like, I haven't been playing that for a while, but I did have that set up for like the dual delay for uh, like, uh, don't forget me. Um, I think I also have this set up for like a reverse. Yeah, but I don't really use that too often. And the last one, um, over here, I have another delay. Oh, like, it's get the zoom's getting twisted when I, I have another delay above the wah pedal and that's for this kind of glitchy thing. Um, I can't, again, I can't demonstrate it without my foot, but I have it, you know, on a little riser so it, I can use it while I'm using the wah pedal. Um, I'll have to do a demonstration of that at some point, but for the kind of glitchy sound that Josh does in uh, Dark Necessities. So it's kind of got like this filtered, you know, the... Uh... And then I... <laughs> well, I don't know, you get the idea. I can't show it on my feet, but that's what I use that for. Um, so that's sort of like the, the, the basic setup. Um, but then, you know, what I do is I go and I set up a preset for each song. And, uh, you know, depending on how complicated the song is, I might use some uh, additional effects uh, in the axe effects. Um, but basically, I have the ability to introduce, you know, any combination of those four loops. Plus, like, I can always manually put on the compressor uh, or the fuzz factor if I want, or switch to chorus, uh, or vibrato with the CE1. And then also in my, uh, oh, I can't turn this around, but in the effects loop, uh, of my axe effects, I have a couple more pedals. So I have the reverb, uh, just on the left side, as you can hear. And I also have the effect on delay, which I can just turn this dial to get the sound. And that'll give me a delay just on the right side. And uh, I also have the pitchfork in there on just the right side. Sometimes I add this octave up part. And this uh, delay is at the end in stereo. But I don't really use that too often. I just had it, so I threw it in there. Uh, but that's all in the effects loop or the axe effects. So depending depending on the preset that I'm using, I can engage the effects loop uh, via the MIDI controller, or I can leave the effects loop off. So preset one I have set up for can't stop. It's got a it's got the effects loop because I want to use reverb. But let's say. Uh, Dark Necessities, I have on number seven, no reverb. Um, so that can get me into explaining now how I use the uh, loop controller. So for each of these presets, so, you know, I have several banks. This goes like one to 32. And each of them, you can set up four different, uh, you know, presets for each bank. And if you hold this down, you can edit it. You can send a program change message. So uh, I usually set up the first foot switch to set a program change, and that's going to select a different preset in the axe effects. And uh, oh, I messed that up. Um, so I have this one set to set program change number one. And it's going to send this, uh, I can send two CC messages through MIDI to CCA or CCB. So I have it set up. So like a, the first message here, uh, you can see, I can send it to send basically like one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. That's kind of how I think about it. So CCA, this is going to select a different scene in the axe effects. So on the axe effects, each of the presets, you can set up eight scenes. I'll have to go through this and show it on the screen later, but uh, 
I basically, you know, set up each song so that there's like, you know, four or I can go up to eight different scenes, but I'll have to use two banks on the controller, but you'll see. So I got this first one sending, you know, like I said, program change number one, CC message A, the first one. And so basically that's going to, you know, when I click the first foot switch, that's going to select the uh, preset for can't stop. And this one is going to select, uh, you know, it's going to send the second CC message. This is going to switch to scene two. And I basically have them set up. So uh, that this will, you know, be scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. So if I want to do any effects changes or whatever special routing stuff in the axe effects, that's all going to happen with these MIDI messages. And at the same time, you can see with these orange lights light up to show you which loops I've selected. So for can't stop, for example, uh, I'm going to always have the micro amp on. I'm always going to have the compressor on over here. And uh, I'll roll my volume back on the bridge pickup. It sounds like this. Okay, you get the idea. And then for scene two is I'll sometimes add a delay and uh, a flanger for the bridge. So I make, uh, you know, one foot switch change and I go from having just the micro amp on to now having the micro amp. Uh, a modulation and a delay. So I've got the flanger and this delay on that sounds like this. And then uh, I think Scene three, I just have set up the same thing, just the mic ramp, so we can go back to the clean tone. And the reason I do that is because I want to avoid the program change mid song. Whenever you send a program change, there's a bit of a duck in the volume because the Axe FX is switching presets. So it, like you hear that little volume drop when I hit this first switch. I try not to switch back to that during a song because I don't like the way that the volume cuts out for a second. And that only happens on program changes. When you do scene changes using those CC messages, uh, it's, it's good. And then for the last one, uh, I switch off the effects loop and I created a bigger reverb sound. I don't know if you can hear much of the difference. It's a little bigger there and I'm using... Uh, you can see this one opens up the distortion loop. So for can't stop, I'll usually have I'm gonna turn the I'll use the noise suppressor, but I usually turn the big muff and the additional mic ramp on to get a really big. And again, that's usually coming right after this part, you know, where I don't usually have the noise suppressor on. You get the idea. We can do multiple effect switching uh, at the same time. So that's just an idea of how I use it for a uh, you know a song like that. Um, I'll just go through. I think I have number three set up for. Uh, I think this is my scar tissue preset. So I'll keep the uh, compressor on. You can see this time I'm not going through any loops uh, at the beginning. So that's just, you know, neck pickup. I like to use the compressor and, uh, you know, pretty much a clean tone. Basically for scar tissue, I'm not doing any uh, anything other than a clean tone. And then I have this fourth switch set up to do, uh, again, the distortion loop. So. Typically, you know, I'll use uh, DS2, the Big Muff, and the Micro Ramp for that one. Um, and, you know, I'll just switch back and forth between a clean tone.
you get the idea there. Again, I think I'm using a, a, a reverb in the Axe Effects for the distortion. Um, and, uh, you know, the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes when the distortion, like the, the signal gets so hot going through the Holy Grail that uh, the reverb itself distorts. And I don't really like the way that that sounds. So I'm typically only using the Holy Grail for my clean tone. And then um, it's a slightly different reverb. Um, and basically I'm routing that separate from my signal chain so that it's like a fully wet reverb. Um, and I can kind of control the input gain and the level of it. So it's sort of like a parallel reverb. And I find that it uh, gets less distorted when I use distortion. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, this pedal board in a nutshell. Um, now I, I can do some, um, you know, I, I talked about using the axe effects for, uh, you know, using reverb, but I can also use it to do some special, uh, routing stuff. Um, so a good example of that is, uh, on the song, tell me baby, um, I'm using it to do some pretty cool stuff using the effects loop and also using some filter effects to sort of emulate like what John's doing on the studio recording. Um, I was, I was going to show that, you know, maybe I'll save that for another video. Um, I would like to show what that looks like in like the Axe Effects editor, uh, because that's pretty much how I set up all these presets um, in the uh, like I use I use the software on the computer to uh, edit my you know sort of presets for each song because um, it's really hard to use like the interface of the Axe Effects itself. Um, but I'll, maybe I'll just show it and, and, uh, if I have some time later, I can go through and show what it looks like, uh, in the editor, but for now I'll just sort of describe it, uh, and we'll, and I'll show you what it sounds like. So, that's the one song where I'm using the Effectron as my delay. You can hear it there. This one, uh, uh, I'm using, uh, I don't like to use the compressor for this one. Obviously it's a song that's on the bridge pickup, um, but you have that sort of finger picked intro. All right, so I'm gonna play that to start on the Neck pickup, uh, you know, I'm completely dry. My guitar's volume's like about seven. And then, you know, when the band kicks in, you're gonna switch to the bridge pickup and do the. So that's a completely clean tone, but then I have the second scene and this is one we're actually using, well, like about, I'm using two banks. So for uh, the second part, I'm gonna, uh, take that clean tone. And again, this is all like routing stuff in the axe effects. I'm going to pan it both amps to the one side and then run it through a fully wet delay with like just a little bit of uh, modulation of the delay time, like in the milliseconds range. So it's sort of like a fake double tracking and then running that second uh, guitar signal uh, through a filter effect, uh, which it sounds like this. Again, this is all just happening with the MIDI messages into the Axe Effects. So I'm getting, you know, basically splitting it. So I'm getting like a dry signal and a filtered signal on the opposite side. You know, um, so that happens after that change, you know, play this part. And then you're going to go into the chorus. 
And for that, I have this sound, which is uh, going through the effects loop. Um, I have reverb on one side and that sort of rhythmic delay on the other side. And then I'm using basically that same tone, but uh, with the phaser for the distortion sound. Um, and, you know, I'm typically using the DS2 and the Big Muff and the Microam to give me this. It's it's an approximation of what he's doing. I think he's using actually the Murph on the solo. Um, I didn't have one when I made this board, so I'm using a phaser to sort of give that sort of some kind of filter effect. And uh, I also think I made a volume block that slowly pans the guitar like slightly from left to right to give it some more movement. But the solo tone sounds like this. <laughs> Um, again, this, I feel like maybe it's a little bit too hot there. It sounds a little weird out of context and I'm not typically using the noise suppressor, but, uh, you know, it really lifts up, uh, in the middle of the song, like having all that stuff. And again, that's a pretty big change from just this clean tone, you know, to this. <laughs> just with the press of one foot switch. Then when we get into the second half of the song, there's some more filter effects in the second verse. So I can uh, bank up for this one. And I have basically like my CCB messages to go through like five, six, seven, eight for the rest of the song. Um, so for the second verse, I have another filter effect where it's like dry filtered on the other side. It sounds like this. And then uh, when he switches parts, uh, you get kind of, I'm going back to the original filter effect, which doesn't have that sort of LFO, uh, you know, change the modulation. So it sounds like this. And when you go up to this, I'm switching back for this sound. And then I'm doing basically the same thing, a dry filter uh, with a clean delay uh, in the middle. Back to the chorus part. And then for for the second solo, I just need to bank down to uh, nine again and again go with the four switch for that solo tone. So that's probably like the most intensive effect uh, heavy in terms of like the use of the axe effects uh, on this one. Um, there are like a few other songs where I use it for, you know, like some different reverbs like I recently learned how to play, uh, or I've been working on Hey, um, and I set up like a uh, kind of a, a plate reverb. Um, it sounded a little different than the spring that he normally uses, but kind of a bigger reverb. sounds maybe a little bright but um, and then you know I can have the uh, wah like I'll probably just play this one with the wah engaged and then step on it when I want to engage it for the solo. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, 
I, w I would like to do more videos like explaining sort of the effects of uh you know what i use in 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 different songs um but yeah i really like using uh this midi control i didn't i didn't say what it is this this one like i, I had like a custom paint job because i thought it was really ugly um but this was the cheapest one that I could find that was a true bypass loop switcher plus like sent the MIDI messages that I wanted. Um, and this is called the Switch Doctor by Decibel 11. Um, and I think it was only like 140 bucks US or something like that. So if you're looking something like this, like that's definitely the cheapest option that I found. Um, I recently invested in a es8 though so i'm going to be uh building a new board that has eight loops uh the last one being full stereo the seventh one being like a mono send stereo return so i'm gonna you know do some cooler routing things with this so that when i want to use the uh chorus pedal i don't have to uh engage it separately i'll still be able to get like stereo engaged effects um all using the loop switcher because right now i need to you know being limited by four loops i have done a good job of like setting it up you know distortion modulation wah delay and also like having the axe effects effect loop um is useful that's kind of like a fifth loop for me um it's still i need to remember to like turn off and on the dynacom for like certain songs that i want to use um so I think I'm just going to be able to do a lot more with the ES8. And one of the main reasons I want to use that is because I want to make a new board with the Murph on it because I got that pedal recently and it's uh, really fun. So I thought of a way with a boss line selector that I can get the stereo capability of the Murph, the CE1 and the, uh, you know, my, my Moog phaser also can do stereo stuff. So, uh, I'm going to unlock a lot more stereo capability with the pedal board and I won't have to bank up, um, for a song like tell me baby with, you know, eight presets. Um, I'll be able to use eight foot switches instead of having to bank up, which, you know, makes like the switching a little bit trickier, uh, in the middle of the song, especially if you're trying to play and, uh, I've been attempting to sing some background vocals. So, uh, you know, the less what switch switching I need to think about, the easier that will be to do that stuff. Cause you know, playing and trying to sing at the same time is hard enough. Um, yeah. So if I have some time later in the day, I'll, I'll go back in and I'll record myself talking about the, uh, like that tell me baby preset with the um like showing you what that actually all looks like in the axe effects editor um but hopefully you found this interesting and you know maybe it's enlightening to some people like uh when i was first getting started with pedal boards i didn't even know that these sort of loop switchers existed i i had one pedal board maybe i'll throw the picture up if i can find it that had uh three boss line selectors uh doing different loops for different types of effects because i thought that's you know i didn't i didn't even, i didn't know i was just naive i didn't know loop switchers even existed so i i sort of made my own loop switcher with three <laughs> boss line selectors um but yeah um I'm, I'm glad that i took the time to 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 make this video and if you're still here listening thanks i, I really appreciate uh, you know, you take it a time caring about what I have to say. I didn't mention it earlier, but that's another thing that's been holding me back from making videos. It's like, who am I to think I'm some sort of authority, uh, you know, on, on tone or guitar playing, you know, like, a, uh, I'm just a nobody in his basement, you know, trying to make pedals, trying to, trying to copy John's sound and style and learn from him, you know, and I, I feel like I've got a lot of stuff to learn for myself. Um, so I by no means think of myself as a, you know, an authority, but I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people out there trying to make these types of videos and, uh, 
you know, I think it, it does require a certain degree of, uh, I don't know, narcissism or delusion to think that people care about what you have to say, but, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm being too modest, but I, uh, that, that, that's just the truth about how I feel. Um, so I, I don't want to portray myself as some sort of uh, self-proclaimed expert, but I do feel like I've, I've made some, you know, sort of interesting, uh, discoveries and, uh, you know, obviously I've spent a lot of time thinking about this stuff, trying to, you know, trying to learn how to play these songs, trying to figure out how, how to get the sound right. And I'm always, I'm always improving, trying to find ways to do it better. Like, you know, and, and sometimes it, um, uh, sometimes it sounds good and it, and it feels good and other times it doesn't. And that's just, that's just part of it. So, yeah. Uh, that's it for now. Maybe I'll be back with a little uh, addendum to show, uh, again, like I said, the Axe Effects stuff. But for now, thanks for watching. Okay, here we go. So here we are in the Axe Edit software. You can see uh, I'm on my Tell the Unity preset and I'm on the first scene. So uh, for this setup, I've got uh, the Silver Jubilee. Uh, I'm, I'll mute the other amp. So the Silver Jubilee sounds like this. Right now it's coming out of the right speaker. Um, and then I've got this uh, Jump Plucky coming out of the left speaker. Together they sound like this. And uh, right now I actually have them both, I think, panned uh, to the right. But then I'm using a volume block here uh, to pan them left and right, which you'll see in a second. But right now, like at the beginning of the song, I can have the guitar in the center. And uh, then when we switch to scene two, you can see these volume blocks uh, go away, but the signal just passes through. And then uh, we have this muted one. Well, actually, I'm going to mute it. I muted it to show you like what it'll sound like without the filter, but taking those two volume blocks away puts both of the amps in the right speaker. So you can see this one on its own, this one on its own. They're on the right now, together on the right. And then what this volume block does, basically it's muting when it's uh, disengaged, um, but then it's, basically taking a copy of the signal here from this amp and a copy of the signal from this amp, uh, putting it through this volume block, which pans it. Uh, well, basically that this is when the guitars are panned to the other side. And then it's going through this fully wet delay that has just like, uh, a millisecond, I guess I thought, I'm not sure how I, Now you can see here, there's an LFO that's uh, basically changing the delay time from 15 milliseconds to 29 milliseconds. So like a very, uh, very subtle delay, just making it so it's not exactly the same as the original. And then it's going through this uh, high pass filter. And what you get on the other side is this. And uh, I played around with this uh, uh, this envelope to get uh, that sound. Um, just so, some trial and error. Um, and then when we go to uh, three, which is the chorus part, I'm engaging the effects loop. Uh, I'm putting back those volume blocks that um, made it go left and right. And then I think I ran out of the volume block. So I used just like a flat EQ block to add a little bit of a boost to the right side. Um, and then you can see both signals are going through this stereo volume block at the end, which is just moving. Uh, you can see this is adjusting the pan left to right very slowly. 
So we're just getting like, I don't know, a little bit of motion in the speakers. But again, that sounds like this. So you can hear there's a reverb on the right side and that sort of rhythmic delay on the left side. Using that same setting, basically uh, taking away that extra little dB boost. Um, this is the one that I use for the solo, but it's also going to be going through distortion and the phaser um, like I showed you. And then we go to scene five, which is basically using the same sort of panning trick as the first, but I'm using a different filter here. Um, and you can see this one's kind of rapidly moving um again a well, this time it's a low pass filter and the cutoff frequency is basically being moved by this lfo so that's the one that sounds like this again i use some trial and error with the filter to get that kind of sound uh Scene six, we go back to the original filter sound for this. And then scene seven, um, we're taking a, uh, you can see the signal splits off here from this straight from the amp. So I'm getting a, uh, the clean signal delayed, not a delay of the part that's filtered. So, and you can see that this delay is a hundred percent wet. So it's basically fully parallel. Uh, so we're getting the, the clean tone, we're getting the filter tone, and then additionally, we're getting a delay, which is right in the center. And that sounds like this together. And then we can go back on the last one for, again, the chorus, which is the same as before. So pretty complex routing you can do. And again, like this, this switching, you know, going from one to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all happens, uh, you know, at the flick of a switch on the MIDI controller. And, uh, you know, in addition to being able to change all of those effects instantaneously, you can also introduce or take away any of those loops. Uh, the true bypass loops. So if you want to add, add a modulation effect, add a delay effect, take away the distortion, whatever, you know, you can change all this, change all the pedals. And uh, I think it's really great to be able to just set up something like this for one song. And yeah, so uh, I hope this was interesting and, and, and cool. And if you want to see more about this kind of stuff, let me know. And uh, like I said, if you've, come this far. Thanks for watching. I, uh, I'm really going to try and make more of these type of videos. So thanks a lot and see you next time. <laughs>